So today we're going to be talking about the difference between blue chip stocks and growth stocks. So I have a lot of people who are frequently asking me questions like, how do I determine what's a blue chip stock? How do I determine what a growth stock is? And it's kind of a difficult question because like my favorite brand of adult diapers, it depends. Okay, I, I had to get that out there, I'm sorry. I thought of that while I was writing this up here on the board, and uh, I know you guys are going to kill me for that really bad joke. But anyways, let's talk about this, guys. So there's no set rules out there, or there's no set official list of blue chip stocks out there. What many people follow is the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the Dow 30, which are 30 very good companies that have been around for a long time. And the list does change once in a while, but many people look at those as examples of blue chip stocks. But there are other stocks out there that many would consider a blue chip stock based on their market capitalization or their dividend history that may not be on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So it, it really does depend. So you kind of have to look around and do your own research. But what I'm going to show you guys are the basic characteristics of some growth stocks as well as the characteristics of blue chip stocks. So maybe you guys can get a better idea when you're looking at a stock, whether it's a growth stock or whether it's more of a blue chip stock. So here's one question I get a lot too. People ask, what is better? Should I invest in blue chip stocks or should I invest in growth stocks? So by the sound of it, many people look at uh, blue chip stocks as kind of a safer, slower growing investment. And many people associate a growth stock with growth and they think that they're going to have a better return on their investment. So let's look at an example right here. So first of all, we have a Vanguard Growth Index Fund. If you guys search for this, you can get this just by searching for it. I had the stock symbol, but I forgot to put it down here. And we're gonna compare that to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which as we said, is a collection of 30 companies that most would consider to be blue chip companies or blue chip stocks. So the answer is, it does depend on what the market is doing. So if we look at this right here, over the last three months, the Vanguard Growth Index Fund has returned 4%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average has returned 8.7%. So over the last three months, blue chip stocks have outperformed. Over the last year, the Vanguard Growth Index Fund has returned 15.9%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average has returned 23%. So over the last year, blue chip stocks performed better. However, over the last five years, this Vanguard Growth Index Fund has returned 85.7%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average has returned only 672 So over the last five years, growth stocks were better. However, over the last year, the blue chip stocks outperformed. So it depends on the market. So many people use the strategy of having a blend of growth stocks as well as blue chip stocks in their portfolio because each outperform each other at different times. So I just kind of wanted to show that to you guys. I know a lot of people go and they say, oh, you know, you got to invest in growth stocks for a better return. However, if you're someone who just started investing a year ago, you would have seen a much better return from blue chips than you would growth stocks if you were looking at index funds. So don't always assume that growth stocks are going to give you a better return. Typically they do because smaller companies grow faster. And we're going to talk about that in a second as far as characteristics of growth stocks. But understand that it depends on the market and there are times that um, the blue chip stocks and the larger companies are outperforming the smaller companies as far as stock price goes. So first of all, let's identify what a growth stock is. So a growth stock is a company increasing in capital value. They're a growing company. Their earnings are expected to grow at a faster rate than the market. So what does that mean? That means that the earnings are going to grow faster than companies of the same industry or of the market overall. So if you were looking at a company that was in a certain sector, let's say you're looking at semiconductors, you would expect this stock to have earnings growing faster than that sector average or faster than other companies within that sector. So here's a couple of examples of some growth stocks. We have Cirrus Logic, we have Zillow, we have Facebook. Now many people may look at Facebook and say, well, based on market capitalization, I'm gonna call that a blue chip stock. So this is kind of where we get into the gray area where people could kind of call that either one because there's no set rules or set list out there. But based on their growth, I would call Facebook a growth stock, despite them being so large. So what are you looking for with a growth stock? Well, the first thing you look at is the growth rate. The best way to look at that is the historical five-year growth and the projected five-year growth, okay? Big companies do not grow as fast as small ones. So if you're someone looking for stocks, so looking for stocks to invest in, here's just some set guidelines of what you might want to look for. If you're looking at a smaller company, because you're expecting them to have more rapid growth, you want to see 10 to 12% historical growth 
and 10 to 12% uh, five-year projected growth. So this kind of shows that this is a growing company and you also want to see future growth being at a higher rate than the previous or the historical growth. So you want to see that they're growing faster now than they were over the last five years. Now because larger companies grow at a slower rate, you might want to see five to eight percent historical growth and then five to eight percent anticipated growth over the next five years. Again, you do want to see a company growing faster than it was in the previous five years if you're looking for certain things within an investment, if you have a, you know, a checklist of some kind. That's one thing I like to see. Then we look at return on equity. So this is basically how well a company uses investments to generate earnings growth. If you want to learn more about this stuff here, I did a whole video recently on how to value a stock. I talked about all these different things and I believe I talked about six different indicators that I look at as far as is valuing a stock. So if this stuff interests you guys, I will link up that video at the end. I highly recommend you check that out. But this is, like we said, how well a company uses investments to generate earnings growth. So here's what I look for in a stock. 17 to 20% return on equity is very good. 20 to 25% is excellent and anything above 25% is superior. So a minimum of 17% is what I like to see. You may have your own set number there that you're looking for, but you want to see that they're having a good return on equity. You want to see that they're using money from investments wisely. You don't want to see a low return on equity because that means they're not using the money very effectively. They're not getting much of a return for it. Another thing you can look at is earnings per share. So are sales resulting in earnings? Maybe their sales are rising, but their earnings per share are remaining flat. You're going to want to see earnings keeping up with sales. You want to see them making more money as well as keeping more money in earnings. You also want to look at profit margins, and you want to see that profit margins are growing. And another thing to look at is the industry average. So what is the average return? So as far as a company on their sales, what are they making in earnings? So you want to look at things like that and make sure they're earning as much as other companies within that industry. Another thing to mention is this. So if you're looking for a growth stock and you're looking at things like return on equity or earnings per share or growth rate, and you're looking at a company that had a recent IPO, you're not going to see these things. So you can't strictly look at this. You have to look at every company individually. So if a company had a recent IPO and they just went public, they have no operating history. So you're not going to see them on these metrics, but that could still be considered a growth stock. All right, so now let's talk about a blue chip stock. And again, guys, I did a whole video talking about blue chip stocks about a month ago. So if you want to learn more about that, I have a ton of videos on my channel. If you guys are new, make sure you guys subscribe because I put out a ton of videos like this just talking about different topics involving the stock market. But a blue chip stock is a stock of a well-established, stable, and financially responsible company, and their earnings and revenue grow at or below the market average. As we said before, Larger companies do not grow as fast as smaller ones, and the blue chip stocks, these are the biggest of the big. These are the largest companies. These are the titans of the industry. Because they're so large, there's no way they could grow as fast as these smaller companies because they're so well established already. Here's a few examples of some blue chip stocks. We have IBM, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, and Visa. The number one thing to look for with uh, blue chip stocks to identify them, I look at market capitalization. You want to see a company with a market capitalization of $100 billion or more. Another thing to look at is the dividend payments to shareholders. Most blue chip stocks, because they're not growing as fast, what they do is they pay dividends to shareholders. So they basically take their earnings and they give a portion of those earnings to the shareholders because the stock is not going to increase as much in some cases as the stocks of these smaller companies. However, if we look at the recent year, they've increased at a greater rate than some of these smaller companies. But anyway, what they do is they pay dividends to shareholders. So this is another way that you can get a return from blue chip stocks. So not only do you want to look at whether or not they are paying dividends, you want to see a history of rising dividends, and you also want to see how long they've been paying dividends, and if they've ever gotten rid of the dividend temporarily or eliminated dividends in the past. So you want to look at their dividend history. That's very important as far as you know, looking at blue chip stocks and deciding on a good investment. But as far as characteristics go, you know, large market capitalization and dividend payments are two very big signs that this would be a blue chip company. Uh, then we have a long standing and time tested. So you want to make sure this is a company that's been around for a long time. This may be why you might not consider Facebook to be a blue chip stock because they had a recent IPO. Despite the fact that they have such a large market capitalization, they haven't been around a long time. They're not a time tested company. So that's why you might not see a company like Facebook on the Dow Jones Industrial Average because these are well established companies that have been around for a long time. 
Another thing to look at is whether it's the leader or the top three of the industry, which I'm sure as you guys can figure, Facebook meets that criteria, but it may not meet some of these other criteria here. So again, this is where we get into that gray area of what you consider a blue chip stock to be because there's no official list out there. But this is what you're gonna be looking for. If you're someone out there looking at a stock and you're trying to determine whether it's a growth stock or a blue chip stock, look at things like market capitalization, how fast they're growing compared to stocks within the sector. Are they paying dividends? And this is how you can determine whether you're looking at a blue chip stock or a growth stock. And like I said, as we looked at with this example here, historically at some times, you know, the blue chip stocks outperform the growth stocks. And at other times, the growth stocks outperform those blue chips. So a blend is actually a good strategy within your portfolio. But I just kind of wanted to clarify this because I get a lot of people asking about this. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to be notified of any future uploads. And as always, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video.